Do a couple more like that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> a little firm. What's up, guys? I'm Nico Horner. We're going to go through some fundamentals to get me ready to play the game. You see what happens on the field, and this is a little behind the scenes. Just like guys on the offensive side work off the tee, work off flips, take care of the simple side of the game, we can do the same thing on the defensive side. For me, that starts at my knees, isolating with one hand and getting comfortable there. Fantastic play by Nico Horner. For me, the pocket of that glove is pretty much gonna be right there. And I'm taking that and just replacing the line of the ball with it over and over, no matter if it's a forehand, a backhand, on the run, on my knees, it's all the same in the end. The first thing that I'm gonna do is a ball right at me on a short hop. I'm gonna do it with one hand, so it's gonna look like this. Short hops right at you, and you're gonna press right through it. Notice that like the movements aren't big, crazy movements like that. Just like when you hit and you replace the path of the ball with your bat, it's a similar idea with your pocket. You're going right back through where it came from, creating that room for error, trying to catch the ball in the same part of the glove over and over, getting pockets. So the same idea that we did right at me, you can turn and work on the backhand side. As an athlete, your body's gonna follow your head a lot. I think the backhand's a place, especially where I kind of exaggerate. Catching it in the pocket, flipping it right back to him. Forehand side, I put my leg up just for comfort. For me, it feels a little bit like the play right there where you're moving to your left. From our knees, we can go to a wide base. We talked about replacing the line of the ball with your pocket already from your knees. Doing that now, but with a little bit of give in my legs, which allows me to move a little more and just getting strong in this position. I think there's definitely something to also just being used to being in this position and kind of an isolated hold a bit in this area, but just the more as an infielder you're comfortable in a wide base and feeling powerful in this position, I think the better. So there's definitely like a nice conditioning aspect to that too. Backhand right here, similar idea, but I am using my lower body to create the best possible hop I can, getting that short hop. The more that we can create a short hop, the more pockets we're gonna get, the better it sets up our throw better carry you're gonna get on your throw and more consistency, and that's what we're looking for. The more that you can create that line with your lower half, getting that energy going down the line of the ball and then towards first base, sets up your throws, sets up the pick, and everything moving the right way. You can do a lot from this space. One thing that you can isolate from here is transfers for double play feeds, whether it's a feed to second base or from shortstop. And it's just really finding that same place in your pocket, getting a consistent transfer, and then hitting the person in the chest with some life. So it's gonna look like this. One important thing in this is you're getting your glove out of the way and really creating energy that way. You're not moving both right there where the second baseman doesn't quite know what's happening and you're showing the ball and giving a firm feed with a stiff wrist. I think the more that you can get the transfer, get that glove out of the way and use it to create power on that flip, that uh, makes a big difference. Nice, yeah. I like to put my left leg up because I don't have super mobile hips. Some guys are able to just work in this space like it's nothing. That's not me. Working from right here is similar to a ball right at you. Get a good hop, feed like that. So we're pretty much just isolating that from the ground. It's gonna be the same flip. From this position is a nice feeling of your throw actually having like life up. As a second baseman, there's nothing worse than a low arm slot that throws a two-seamer at you and it's on you like this and then you're turning it and you feel gross. The best is when a guy is throwing and they're still able to get a nice four seam with life 
going up that you can transfer easily. And the more than you can do that as a shortstop or second baseman, just double plays become a lot more fun. And double plays is one of the best parts of baseball, so. Hard hit, ground ball. Oh, diving backhand stop, Horner throws to first in time. What a play by Horner. We've worked on our hands so much. We know how to catch the ball. Now it's all about our lower half. The pancake glove is a flat glove. It doesn't really close and it's valuable because you're not gonna catch it if you're on a bad hop. You either want a hop that's a short hop, right into the glove, landing right before the glove, or a long hop where it's in the air for a long time. We're working the pancake is a time to really focus on detail. So right here, we're working on gaining ground, choosing a good hop, funneling to the middle of our body, and making an accurate throw to first base. Usually how I start ground balls every day. So right there, that's a nice example of a short hop. The second it hits my pancake, it's being deflected in my hand and I'm up and ready to throw. Transfer that feeling to your real glove and the game becomes a lot easier. Nice long hop right there, sets up a throw. One thing I often feel, you can see a little bit right there, ball kind of getting towards the outside of my body. The more that you get the ball on your right side, your arm's gonna be working behind you on your transfer start to get in tail, cut, sink. The more we can keep that transfer inside of our body, cleaner our throws, simpler game. You see guys doing crazy drills, get around cones and create that momentum to first base. For me, it's just getting on the outside of the baseball so that you can read the hop as well as create energy towards first base, catching the ball in the center of your body and making an accurate throw. So we've all seen diving plays, amazing picks, great reads on pop-ups behind us, and that all starts before the ball is even thrown, called the pre-pitch. I think one common misconception is a down and ready position where you're wide and you're stuck and you're in the ground before the ball is even entering the hitting zone. Like, if I were to defend someone in basketball from right here, like, I got no chance, like, I'm getting crossed up. The more that we can be in a position that works best for your body, feel it out, but for me, it looks something like this, where I'm moving with the pitcher as he's going through his windup, and I'm reacting to the swing. You might actually be in the air a little bit while the ball's entering the hitting zone. For me, that means I can, I can actually land going one direction or the other based on the swing that I'm seeing, the pitch that's coming, a lot of factors. I try to keep it on the simpler side. I feel like that's something that makes it repeatable where I'm athletic while the ball's entering the hitting zone and I can explode in any direction. Something you can work on in BP really easily whether the ball's being hit to you or not. Just getting those reads. Boom, fly ball to right field, but you're moving with it. You know, ball straight over your head. You're moving regardless of where it is and just kind of getting your hips going. Doesn't matter what kind of athlete you are, you can always gain an extra step from taking care of the start. And uh, when you have a group of guys all moving together on time with the balls, entering the hitting zone. Uh, it's, it's a really fun thing to do. And this ball is bounced to the hole, backhanded by Horner, jump throw to first, and he got it. Sensational play by Nico Horner. For me, this stuff never gets boring. Whatever you consider yourself as a defender, there's always room for progress. and something I really enjoy, so I'm glad we could share that.